The Biden administration this week announced $667 million in new funding to build more broadband internet access. The grants and loans are spread across 22 states, but will target rural, remote, and unserved communities. This funding comes from the 2021 Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, which dedicated $65 billion to broadband investment. To understand what this funding might mean, we are joined by Drew Clark. He is the CEO of Broadband Breakfast, an internet advocacy company. Thank you so much for being with us. First, let's get a sense of how much of the United States still lacks internet access. Well, it's not as easy a, a question as you would think, John. Uh, the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, has had a definition that broadband equals 25 megabits per second downstream and three megabits per second upstream. And increasingly, people are realizing that's a woefully inadequate definition because it doesn't allow you to do simple things like video conference, like speak to one another on uh, computer connections. And so there's a kind of an alternate definition of 100 megabits per second down and 20 megabits per second up. So if you use that lower definition, you, you basically have a smaller number, 9 million people that are without broadband. If you use the higher definition, you have a larger number, 35 million people that are without broadband access. And give us a sense, um, going with that 30, sort of closer to 35 million, because we're talking about effective, useful uh, internet connection here. If you do not have effective, useful connection, or you have that pokey connection, what kinds of impediments are there to, uh, to a, a community that has a s slow or non-existent connections? Well, incredible, incredible impacts, John. Uh, lots and lots of rural America is realizing that if they don't get that kind of high speed connectivity, they're going to be left out of the 21st century economy. It's it's as if your your city's been bypassed by the the, the railroad line or or the freeway. And and so you need to make sure that you have that kind of symmetrical capacity, high speed capacity. So uh, everything from education. I mean, nowadays uh, much of our education is completely. Uh, online. Increasingly, telemedicine is being done and has incredible cost-saving potentials. Uh, you know, think of the ways that we connect today uh, uh, with our government. There are many job applications you can't even make if you're not online. So, so having a robust connection is is really vital, and that's why I think you you certainly see the Biden administration is putting a very strong emphasis on internet for all that is also affordable and high quality broadband. What kind of economic impact could this have? I mean, obviously if for education, there's long-term economic impacts for, for kids who get a better education, but at the moment, are there job opportunities? In other words, uh, companies that could suddenly access a workforce in a rural area that it might not have had access to earlier? And then going in the other direction, are there workers in rural areas who might have lost their jobs for one reason or another uh, but who now might, through faster internet connections, have access to jobs uh, halfway across the country. B both of those apply. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, we see in some in some cases, communities have been at the mercy of broadband providers that have been a little bit too slow, pokey to get on uh, the, the 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 bandwagon of of building high capacity network. There's there's one company, the Flying J Truck Stop, that had their their wires cut and and basically told by the incumbent provider that uh, you know they they wouldn't be they wouldn't be replacing them. So they they had to go and uh, work with the city to build their own high capacity fiber network. Uh, this was this was in uh, in Layton, Utah. There's there's many many situations in which uh, rural residents uh, just you know, don't don't have the same opportunities. I mean, lots and lots of 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 manufacturing jobs where we're seeing a lot com coming back now. But but when you don't have the jobs in your community, you obviously can either relocate or you can get an online job. There's so many opportunities now as long as you have that kind of high speed con connection in your community. 
And, and finally, Drew, what's the timing on this in terms of uh, from money out of Washington to faster Internet connection in some of these underserved communities? Uh, unfortunately, it isn't a, a quick or, or, or instant process. Uh, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, the bipartisan infrastructure measure th that you mentioned earlier, that uh, was signed into law in November 2021. And we're, we're just now in the process in which states have been allocated some portion of the $42.5 billion that's, that's out there. Uh, you, you mentioned, of course, ReConnect, which is a program of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The uh, program that I mentioned earlier, the bipartisan infrastructure law, is largely the U.S. Commerce Department passed through to states. But this, this is going to take two, three, four, five years mm. to get these kinds of robust connections to everywhere in the country. Drew Clark, CEO of Broadband Breakfast, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, John.